Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. I am your host, Joe Kuzma. Would like to welcome returning listeners and any new listeners, whether you're listening via all the different platforms that the Steel City Underground podcast is available on, including iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, and those of you who may be listening to this as the syndicated version through the various platforms from BehindTheSteelCurtain.com, such as Blog Talk Radio. I'd like to welcome everyone. Always appreciate the comments, feedback, and support. Sorry that maybe I only got two of these out to you this week. I do try at a very minimum to send out a pair during the week, but with the holiday weekend now in the rear view, well, almost in the rear view, if you have the jagoffs like I do in the neighborhood that are still blowing off fireworks, they still think it's Independence Day. It's been Independence Day for about a week and a half now, and hopefully their fireworks budget has now run out and they could just stop blowing off bottle rockets and uh, various firecrackers and everything else. But aside from hashtag yinzing, I think we use that. I was talking with someone on Twitter about that, and I always have a famous kind of thing that I I may have coined this. I think this has to go on a T-shirt that I could sell in the Steel City Underground shop at steelcityunderground.com slash shop. Yes, plugging the T-shirts, but yinzers are going to yinz. I think that has to happen. I'm going to make that happen. I'm going to write a mental note down right now, but Yinzing, aside from the fireworks, the NFL Top 100 list. If you saw the article either on SteelCityUnderground.com or BehindTheSteelCurtain.com or for short because I run out of breath saying BehindTheSteelCurtain.com, BTSC wrote an article talking about the NFL Top 100. And I think I might split this into two parts because I'd love to talk about Antonio Brown coming in at number four. And something very cool, I had like one of these little kid moments where... Antonio Brown retweeted one of the vines, the videos that I had up at one of his highlights, and then actually pinned one to his profile. It's been changed since. The guy's very active on social media, but retweeting that, that was very cool, very awesome. Getting the Steel City Underground out there and in front of Steelers fans and Steeler Nation. Thank you, Antonio Brown, if you are listening to this. If you're not, somebody that may know him, that knows him through a friend, through an uncle, through a relative, through marriage through another second cousin that had a high school teacher that somehow knew a football coach that could get through to Antonio Brown, let him know I said thank you. (laughs) That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Not as crazy as maybe Cam Newton at number one, Tom Brady at number two, Aaron Rodgers at number six, and some other guys that weren't in the top ten that are the collective five quarterbacks as, quote, voted on by the players, though many players have admitted that they've never actually voted or seen a ballot for this NFL Top 100, a genius product, as Jeff Hartman from BTSC, and I also think his broadcast partner, maybe on one of the shows that they're doing, they have a new show over there, by the way, you could check out, and it's a little bit of a shorter format, or it was the standard is the standard, but I was listening to Jeff, and I told Jeff just the other day that, I I don't like listening to his podcast before I record mine on a very similar topic because I'm going to end up saying the same thing, and maybe it's just because of something in the back of my head, and I was just about to do it right there because I just can't believe that there's all of these different QBs listed above Ben Roethlisberger. And you know what? There's positives and negatives to both of these, but the one part was that the players, like, The players say that they're not even voting on this. Who comes up with this list? And it is a genius product of the NFL and NFL Network to fill some airtime. Wednesdays probably aren't a very, yeah, maybe they're a good time. Maybe that's why they do put it on Wednesdays. I never understand what they do, why they do it. But they put out this list. It's like 10 weeks worth of shows, one-hour shows. And then there's a reaction show. They didn't run a reaction show for an hour or two and let everybody just yap, 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 yap. Just the same thing I'm doing right here, talking about why this person's listed here or this person's listed there. It's all subjective. None of this really counts for anything. But you know what? 
what else do we have to talk about right now, right? So we're going to yins. And Jeff is right. This is a genius thing by NFL Network because they get us to talk about it. They get us to watch. Then they get us to watch like people talk about it. And you're listening to me talk about it. So let's get on with it. The five quarterbacks better than Roethlisberger, according to the NFL Top 100. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out how this really works. And I've had some back and forth. There were a lot of comments on Behind the Steel Curtain on the actual article. And I think that one was titled, It's Laughable That There's Five Quarterbacks Better Than Roethlisberger. And everybody says the same thing. Like, hey, you know, you, you can go this way with this guy or I'd rate this guy this way. Maybe Ben's too high. Maybe Ben's too low. All of that's valid. But the one thing that kind of get under my skin and I can't figure out about this list and if it is voted on by the players, are they supposed to be voting on how the players are supposed to perform in 2016? Because this is a top 100 list of players for 2016. So by that merit, this particular list is supposed to be Cam Newton as the best player in the NFL this year. Will he live up to that? Oh, I don't know. He could. It's very possible. There's also the possibility that Tom Brady doesn't live up to number two overall. So two quarterbacks, number one and two. And then, of course, J.J. Watt comes in as the third best player on this list. And then followed by Antonio Brown at number four. And then the rest of the people, I really, you know, it doesn't matter until we get down to number 21, Ben Roethlisberger, at least in the top 25 this year. So Ben Roethlisberger, the previous year, when they were listing the top players in for 2015, he comes in at 26. He's not even in the top 25 players in the NFL. And he had a much better year coming out of 2014. So I don't understand if you're trying to base it on the previous year's stats. And if you are, there's some fundamental mistakes to this. And if you're going by a whole career, there's even more fundamental mistakes with this. Because someone like Cam Newton, for example, do you want to know what Cam Newton's completion percentage was for 2015 it wasn't very good in fact if you want to take some other players that well of course they're not on this list Michael Vick Landry Jones Steelers backup quarterbacks they're in the same ballpark as Cam Newton Cam Newton with his career 59 and a half percent completion percentage and Newton's 59.7, just 0.2% better than his career average, trying to hit the broad side of a barn in 2015. There's lots of quarterbacks that struggle to maintain 60% of their passes. Would you think that Michael Vick actually completed more passes? Not a total volume, but on average, 60.6%. Almost a full percentage point more, 0.9% more passes than Cam Newton. A valid comparison for the style of quarterbacks that they were, but Michael Vick was terrible last year. Yes, he won games, but for the most part, he had no connection with any of the Steelers' wide receivers, especially when you have the GOAT, greatest of all time, such as Antonio Brown, a player listed number four as the fourth best player in the National Football League, the top wide receiver in the top 100 list. Michael Vick just couldn't connect with a player like that, could not utilize him. Antonio Brown's numbers go in the hole. If he has Ben for that, geez, do you imagine the year that Antonio Brown has? He's got to be number one on this list if that happens. And if if they hook up like they did last year, this year, maybe we'll see that. But let's talk about that. Michael Vick and then Landry Jones with 58.2. And this is Cam Newton. Now, Cam Newton scores touchdowns in gobs. He runs the football, 10 rushing touchdowns. And he has 35 more touch or 35 touchdowns, one less than Tom Brady, who had the league lead with 36. And it's a multi way tie with some other quarterbacks that are in the NFL top 100. One that I will mention soon that is way more high rated, overrated. Than he should be. You have Eli Manning, who's probably just as underappreciated as a Ben Roethlisberger and as 47th. He's somewhere like the 7th or 8th quarterback rated. I believe Drew Brees and Andy Dalton come in ahead of him. In fact, Phillip Rivers came in at one spot ahead of Eli Manning as well. Two-time Super Bowl champion who had a turnaround year last year. And I think Drew Brees, Eli Manning, and Ben Roethlisberger all suffer 
from the same problem last season of having the 30th, 31st, and 32nd worst pass defense in the league. I think the guys throw a lot of balls because they're playing from behind sometimes, but the Steelers weren't playing from behind all the time. They were a wild card team. Yes, some things fell into place. They didn't exactly run the North like they did the previous season. We expect things to change when players are healthy. Cam Newton. Okay. League MVP led his team to a Super Bowl. I'm actually pretty okay if you want to make Cam Newton a case for him to be one of the top quarterbacks. Maybe not the top quarterback. As much as it pains me to say that, that might go to the next name on this list, who's Tom Brady, who threw for more touchdowns than Cam. He's not running around, but he's completing a larger volume of passes, percentage-wise, touchdowns, interceptions. Really, Cam came out of his shell last year. It's the player that everyone wanted him to be when he was first-round draft pick, taken top overall. That's what we really wanted to see, right? That's a real good story for Cam Newton. Some people are going to diss him because they don't like that he's flashy. A lot of people don't like that about Antonio Brown either. So what? Who cares? He produces on the field. Well, let's see Cam Newton do it every year. Because let me tell you, Ben's worst year completion percentage-wise is what Cam Newton did for this past season. This is one of the better seasons of Newton, too. It's above average for Cam Newton. And he's still, at best, Ben's worst at completing passes. Now, Ben threw a lot of interceptions last year. Ben plays hurt. If a football falls at Ben Roethlisberger's feet in the Super Bowl, you bet your you-know-what that he's diving on it. Okay. That's why I take Ben Roethlisberger over Cam Newton. I don't care if Cam's a a dual-threat player. We see what Ben's been able to do since he hasn't had to run for his life like he used to do when he was younger. So Cam's still got a lot of time for his story to be written. We'll see if he does that. But it's just insane to me that Cam Newton jumps from 73rd in this poll, whoever votes on this, to number one over the player who was number one the previous year, Tom Brady. Tom Brady just, he just keeps doing it. What is he, 38, 39? going to be 39 I do believe August he turns 39 and he plays at this elite level will he fall off a cliff this year like Peyton Manning did everybody was still on the Peyton Manning bandwagon just like the Manning wagon I like that that's pretty cool I have to send that to some of my Broncos fans especially the ones who are really complaining about that video I'd shared with AB stiff arming Chris Harris cornerback for The Denver Broncos, uh, uh, who won the Super Bowl? Yeah, shut up. You know what? We won this game, and if A.B. would have played in that second game too, maybe somebody else would have won the Super Bowl, not called the Denver Broncos. But I have lots of Denver Broncos fans, almost as many as Cleveland Browns fans. Don't have any Seahawks fans. I think they all disappeared anyway because they didn't get in the Super Bowl. We'll be talking about Russell Wilson here too because he is also one of these five quarterbacks ranked ahead of Ben, though – I do feel maybe he was a bit disrespected in this list, but back to Tom Brady. Okay. Tom Brady, the only thing that you can really knock Tom Brady for was his completion percentage last year. Who is he throwing the ball to? You had Gronk hurt a little bit there, and he didn't have Edelman and for a few games, I want to say, and Amendola always banged up. and So necessarily the personnel – And this is very similar to Ben Roethlisberger. A lot of people are going to say, well, he has Antonio Brown and he has Le'Veon Bell and Martavis Bryant. Look, Martavis Bryant didn't play five games to start the season last year. Le'Veon Bell plays in only six games. Antonio Brown is a constant, played every game in the regular season last year. And then Ben doesn't play four games himself. The Killer Bees, I can't remember the statistic, folks, but it was something like two dozen snaps total on the field for those four players, the Killer Bees, all at one time in 2015 and it'll be zero for 2016 because Martavis Bryant suspended for the whole year unless the NFL changes its policy on marijuana all of a sudden again which they did do last year you remember there were guys like Wes Welker who weren't supposed to play x amount of games and they uh Josh Gordon's of the world and they lowered the bar and then you still had Josh Gordon screw up and continue to screw up anyway so I hope many of these stories change for these young players but 
Tom Brady, I mean, he's had the players to throw to. One could expect if he continues to do this and you want to call him a system quarterback and Bill Belichick this evil genius, maybe Brady continues maybe he continues strong. Brett Favre was doing it in his 40s, right? Could happen. I mean, Brady led all these statistical categories as a passer, passing yards and touchdowns, and he didn't throw a whole lot of interceptions, and he doesn't get sacked often either. So that's probably the key. If he gets pressured, who knows? Maybe Father Time will finally catch up. But the things that loom over Brady is the, like the flake gate. Is the guy a cheater? Yes, no. Does everyone else do it? I don't know. It's certainly a possibility. But I want to say the one reason I don't like Tom Brady being thought of as the second best player in the 2016 season, if you're going to, you're, you're looking in the crystal ball and you've played 16 games and you've gone through the playoffs and everything else, what if Tom Brady doesn't play four of those games this season? Does he have as high a numbers? And that's the thing I always think of. I think of maybe Ben Roethlisberger was disrespected this year on this list. He's higher than he was, but could he have been higher if he played all 16? Is it because he missed four games? Well, I think looking in a crystal ball, if Tom Brady misses four games, then he's not number one or two or even in the top ten of this list. Because statistically, missing four games, he, the numbers are going to slide. So there's my knock on Tom Brady, but I'm not saying he's not deserving of this position. He plays all 16 games and plays as he did in 2015. Sure, and he has the career track record, love him or hate him. That's another point. A lot of people think that Ben Roethlisberger, the players, just don't like the Steelers. This is a love-hate thing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're not going to vote for Pittsburgh Steelers players to be higher on this list. Eh, okay, maybe, maybe not. Remember a lot of these players, and I've talked about this before, with free agency and where players decide to play and coaching staffs and people, people know people who know people. You know, the joke that I was just saying earlier about thanking Antonio Brown for the retweet type thing, that's a real-life thing. These guys are like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon and – they all know each other, and a lot of them will do off-season workouts with one another and et cetera, et cetera. So I really, if if people hate Big Ben and that's the reason why they have him listed at 21, how can people not hate Tom Brady, especially with the, the, the whole entire deflate gate allegations against him? It's just kind of, you know, contradictory to one another unless maybe Pittsburgh Steelers don't vote on this list and, uh, like, the, all of the – New England Patriots and their staff do, then okay, then maybe that would make sense why they stuff the box and Brady moves up there. But the one that doesn't make sense to me, this is the one that angers me. And it's not necessarily because he's not a talented player and he's definitely surrounded by talent, and that's Aaron Rodgers. And yes, Randall Cobb hurt at times, and Eddie Lacy maybe not getting it going and getting benched, and James Starks coming in. It's the same thing I was talking about with that whole trios thing. Jordy Nelson being gone the whole year. And you have some other players maybe not living up to expectations. Aaron Rodgers getting sacked. I think I think he was like second in sacks. Let me see if I have it here. I do not, but I thought he was second in sacks maybe to Blake Bortles last year. Like Aaron Rodgers was just running for his life. Had one of the worst seasons. I think the worst season he's had since he was a rookie. And he gets ranked number sixth overall in the NFL. So everybody still thinks he's going to be this great player in 2016. But people want to tell me this is based on 2015 numbers. And that's just BS. It's just, it's crap. It it can't be based on 2015 numbers if you're going to rank Aaron Rodgers in the top 10 of the NFL as the third overall quarterback when he, did, he wasn't in the top 10 of any major passing statistics whatsoever. His completion percentage dipped to 60.6. That was lowest since 2005 in 10 years. And then it's just he regressed in every category possible across the board. Touchdowns, yards, he threw more interceptions than in previous seasons. And I'm not saying that Aaron Rodgers isn't a good player, can't bounce back, and when he gets Jordy Nelson back, that he's going to be a top-five quarterback and possibly a league MVP candidate. But we saw some of these Hail Mary passes that really padded his stats. I mean, he just was not the player that he was the previous years. Overall, his whole body of work, sure. I'm going to give him a pass, but I don't like it here. If we're going to say this is based on 2015, and that's the reason why the next two guys are on this list, which would be Russell Wilson 
and Carson Palmer. I just, I don't buy it. So Russell Wilson and Carson Palmer have each have one good year in 2015. They're going to be ahead of Ben, but Aaron Rodgers has a lousy season, pedestrian numbers. Kirk Cousins has better numbers than Aaron Rodgers. Most of the other quarterbacks that are in the top 100, including Cousins or Drew Brees or Eli Manning or, God forbid, I'm going to say this, Andy Dalton, all have as good or better years. And you're going to say Aaron Rodgers is the sixth best player in the NFL over the likes of players like Luke Kuechly or Julio Jones or Rob Gronkowski or Odell Beckham Jr. And you got Von Miller that comes in at like number 15 for some reason, but you put Josh Norman at number 11. Josh Norman has one good year. Okay, you're basing it on 2015. Josh Norman, number 11, great cornerback. I think the top corner as listed in that 100. I'm trying to think of this right now, and I do believe that's true because I think the rest of the names that I didn't mention so far are like Adrian Peterson or, well, the rest of that top 100. Yeah, Adrian Peterson was number five. And then, of course, Josh Norman. And we're going to go right behind Josh Norman is Carson Palmer, ahead of the Super Bowl MVP Von Miller at number 15. Are you nuts? That is just the absolute craziest thing. Like, who would vote for that? There's nobody thinking that. There's nobody that's a quarterback or an offensive player or like an offensive lineman that's thinking, well, you know what? That Von Miller, eh, Josh Norman's better than that, or Carson Palmer's better than that. Like, Carson Palmer, just one decent year. Of course, he was just killing it in 2014 before he gets hurt, plays six, seven games. But anything before that, he's lousy. Then they're going to say, well, Bruce Arians revived his career in the desert. Oh, get out of here. The guy's throwing the ball all over the field. He threw 22 picks. He got sacked 41 times. He fumbled the ball six times. He might have thrown for 4,000 yards, but it's the third time Palmer's thrown 20 or more interceptions in a season, and it doesn't mean that Big Ben's immune to doing something like that. But guess what? That's also when Big Ben had Bruce Arians as his offensive coordinator. Some people that really hate Todd Haley still and can't get that, like, get off of that horse already because Bruce Arians, the offense like stalled. Okay. Yeah. They got to some, they got to a super bowl with Bruce Arians and whatnot, but you know what? Like not everything lasts forever. It just doesn't work that way. And you see what happens is a lot of people are trying to tell me, well, Todd Haley comes in and Bruce and, and then Ben ends up getting hurt more than when he had Bruce, but look what happened to Carson Palmer gets sacked that many times and misses like what? Like, 11 games, uh, oh, that's not the right math. Hold on a second. Uh, he only played six or seven games that one season, so he misses nine or ten games, and that's exactly the same. That's what got Bruce Arians forced out of Pittsburgh, and it's the same thing. Okay, Carson Palmer had one good year. Let's see him do that again this year. To have him as number 12, even over Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson comes in on this list as number Oh, where's he at? Number 17. I may have said number 19 earlier. That wasn't correct. Number 17, so he's about four spots ahead of Ben on this list. And, you know, Russell Wilson extends the play. Russell Wilson kind of came unglued as well, just like Cam Newton last year, showed that he could actually throw the ball. He wasn't just being a game manager. They weren't just running the football. And some of that was really out of necessity because Marshawn Lynch was banged up and hurt. They bring Thomas Rawls in there. Thomas Rawls was more than capable of handling that load in Seattle the running game, and then he gets hurt as well, and it's just like, okay, well, what do we have left? And I think they were working on, like, all kinds of, like, just street free agents and uh, whatever they had as far. It was like the Steelers putting Fitzgerald Toussaint in in a playoff game. So it was a very similar situation where you're going uh, deep on your bench in order to see if this player is going to be able to ki- – be able to carry your team in the running game. And they really did lean on Russell Wilson. And we see that with them giving a ridiculous contract to Doug Baldwin, who I don't know if Doug Baldwin makes Russell Wilson better or if Russell Wilson makes Doug Baldwin better. But then again, you have one of the greatest tight ends to date in the NFL, one of these game-changing, redefining the position, just like Rob Gronkowski. You have Jimmy Graham. They trade for him as a tight end in what did Jimmy Graham do in Seattle? If Ben Roethlisberger has Jimmy Graham, is Jimmy Graham still the same type of player? Drew Brees, look what they did in in New Orleans versus what happened in Seattle. Russell Wilson didn't necessarily make – Jimmy Graham just kind of disappeared, then he got hurt, and then he was gone for the rest of the year. I want to see what happens. 
you can't tell me that Jimmy Graham isn't worth what he's worth and getting paid and, and all the accolades and being a pro bowler and everything like that. It's just kind of weird, don't you think? So, Russell Wilson, I got to wonder. Those quarterbacks are placed ahead of Ben and they're taking more risks. They're throwing more pass attempts. Way more pass attempts than Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's more accurate than Cam Newton. And he runs the ball. And he had the most, second most attempts in his career last season. We'll see if he could keep that pace. It hasn't worked out well for some others like Colin Kaepernick, RG3. So I really do want to see what Russell Wilson can bring. He's been in two Super Bowls back to back. Last year, they didn't quite make it. I mean, he's been an outstanding player for all these years. He's been a starter so far in Seattle. So necessarily do is it get under my skin, maybe just because Russell Wilson's new. He's not a veteran as opposed to Big Ben, who's done it and done it long, for a very long time, very consistent, same way as Tom Brady. Actually, same way as Aaron Rodgers, but not the same way as Carson Palmer. God forbid Carson Palmer being high up on this list just makes my blood boil. Maybe it's because he still has the stench of being a Cincinnati Bengal on him. It could very well be it. So if you have a healthy Ben Ross- Roethlisberger, is he 21 or better, or is he lower on this list? And I've already shown you it's not all based on 2015 statistics. I mean, you have Wilson and Newton, and you're saying the best players in the NFL. I don't know. I'll take Big Ben any day over those two, over Palmer. Brady and Rodgers, that's kind of the class you're kind of talking about. A top three quarterback with Ben Roethlisberger, that's where I kind of want to see it. I just I just don't get Rodgers. I don't get Palmer. They're not as consistent. Especially since you consider Rodgers had a bad season and Palmer had a good season. And then, so where does that leave Ben Roethlisberger? He, well, he had more, a little bit less of a good season than usual. I mean, his touchdowns were cut short. He was playing hurt. He threw some ill-advised interceptions. It happens. But I still think like a player like Josh Norman, you see the guys that are also ranked ahead of Ben Roethlisberger, Khalil Mack, one good year, eh, maybe two good years. He was 49th before Mac, just a sack machine last year. Aaron Donald, who was previously ranked 92, comes in at 14th. They're both ranked ahead of the Super Bowl MVP, number 15, Von Miller. Just That just is mind-blowing. A.J. Green comes in here at number 16, and I think maybe he was a little bit underrated. Maybe 16 is okay for A.J. Green. I look at A.J. Green's numbers and what he does and brings to the Bengals, and he's definitely a star player. I just don't think I like him because he plays for Cincinnati. But I could see him being like a top 20 player. Maybe he's not ranked high enough. I don't know. Aaron Donald, I love Aaron Donald, you know. Obviously the Pittsburgh ties. I I wish that he would have been able to become a stealer. But I don't know. It's it's very subjective. Then of course, Russell Wilson at 17, and then Patrick Peterson at 18, which is just kind of crazy that you would actually put Josh Norman ahead of Patrick Peterson and Richard Sherman, who's at number 20. Sandwiched in between those is number 19, DeAndre Hopkins, who had four different quarterbacks last year and still got it done, kind of like Antonio Brown still getting it done with Landry Jones in Ben's absence and a few passes he actually caught from Michael Vick. Just, just a very strange NFL Top 100 list. Rob Gronkowski at number nine. Is that too low? Is Adrian Peterson too high coming in at number five as the best running back? And Julio Jones, he's fighting tooth and nail for recognition with Antonio Brown. But do you think Julio Jones is a better player than Odell Beckham Jr.? I I don't know. Julio Jones had a fantastic year, but is he consistent enough? I don't know. This is one of those things where you just can't figure out what people were thinking. Did they take a blindfold, spin them around three times like at a party and throw darts at a board? It is possible. But as far as Ben's ranking, might be too high. Really? Yeah, that's that's possible. I hear the arguments for that too. You had Eli Manning who threw for more yards and more touchdowns. In fact, Eli Manning, 4,436 yards, 35 TDs, and Drew Brees with 4,870 and 32 touchdowns 
And Ben's ranked ahead of both of them, despite they having, they're having better numbers. Now, those teams weren't playoff teams, and they didn't win. So I guess that's where it really factors in, is when you're mentioning the five players that are ahead of Ben Roethlisberger as far as the quarterback position. Their teams, they led their team. Brady once again in an AFC championship. Cam Newton getting him to the Super Bowl. But Carson Palmer completely implodes. Barely able to beat the Green Bay Packers in, what, the divisional game that Arizona and Green Bay met. And then you just saw Arizona get totally pasted by the Carolina Panthers, 49-10. to Carson Palmer in the playoffs throwing six interceptions. That's the way I remember Carson Palmer's 2015. And it just was not pretty. They eked out that victory against Green Bay in overtime. Now, granted, Green Bay Green Bay gave them a game, and maybe that game shouldn't have went to overtime. And that's another reason why maybe Aaron Rodgers gets the legacy pick here and gets to be number six. So, it, like, Aaron Rodgers doesn't, like, necessarily... It gets under my skin as being as high as he is, but I still think he is a deserving top five quarterback. But to put Carson Palmer in this list is just insane. We look at the other quarterbacks, as I said before. Andy Dalton comes in at number 35. Phillip Rivers at 46. Eli Manning at 47. You round it out with Blake Bortles at 56. Alex Smith at 81. Kirk Cousins at 85. And then Andrew Luck at 92. And Derek Carr at 100. And Andrew Luck was previously thought of as the seventh best overall player as, quote, voted by the fans in the 2015 edition of this list. And now he's like 92nd. I'm just going to leave that out there on the table, whether somebody would want Andrew Luck or some of the aforementioned names. And there's all pros and cons to all of it. And, of course, Derek Carr comes in at number 100, the very last on the list. He may move up the charts. Oakland Raiders kind of turning it around, but... Ben Roethlisberger, he'll be the first to admit to you that these lists don't matter to him. He's the one that makes the mistakes. He's not going to blame it on poor offensive line protection. He's not going to say somebody ran the wrong route or somebody didn't catch a ball that they may have had the ability. No, he's going to place it on himself. And the only thing that matters to Big Ben, I can tell you this, is getting that seventh Lombardi trophy. And I think this year... I think Ben may have more motivation. This whole team has some motivation. Is this the last ride for, like, James Harrison? Do we want to get him that championship the same way they got that championship for Jerome Bettis? I think so. I think that's what you're going to see. I think Ben Roethlisberger may not get the same type of respect that he should outside of Pittsburgh, but everybody inside of Pittsburgh certainly thinks and feels that he is the top quarterback in the NFL. And you know what, folks? I have to agree with you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always fun talking Pittsburgh Steelers football. I'm going to be talking about A.B. sometime in an upcoming episode here. And still coming up, 2015 predictions on the defensive side of the Steelers. That's still coming. Still in the works. But until then, be safe, be good, and I will catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.